<clears throat> Story time with Princess Ama, Part 6. Hana chuckled as she continued bringing down bottles of whatever from the cupboards. Ama thought to herself, this is too easy. But she stayed, and she stayed to see what would happen. Ama looked around for a chair or something to sit on because her feet were getting very tired. Oh, honey, honey, here, take a seat here, Hana said with a twinge of how could I have been so rude in her voice. Hana pointed to a cashmere chair that was stuffed with straw and feathers. It'll probably make your back feel better. Thank you, Hana, Ama said as she settled herself comfortable into the chair. I hope you don't mind me asking, but what are you doing exactly? Being pregnant, Ama had a powerful nose. She smelled rose, clove, frankincense, and high john, as well as some other very foul scent that she didn't recognize. Honey, I'm creating your escape, she said as she mixed the vials together in a medium-sized pot over a fire that was purple. As the water mixture was boiling, she pulled out a chair from under the sink. Now, Hana said, scooting closer to Ama and putting her hand on her knee. What is your plan? Ama winced at the touch of Hana's hand on her knee, as being touched at all usually ended up with her being severely hurt. But Ama relaxed instantly. Uh, uh, I, I just wanted to see if anyone here would be able to come get me in a few weeks. I have a set up time, a place to meet, and I can pay for the distance that we need to travel. Hana shook her head in disappointment. Ama, you will get caught. I promise you that. Hana took Ama's hand and looked her in the eyes. Hana told her to eat what she had made her. You and your child will be perfectly fine. Trust me. Hana handed Ama something that looked like a pile of rice in a baggie. Some kind of magical rice or something. It's only magic rice, dear. There's nothing to be afraid of. Ama smelled it and she observed it. She didn't really know what to take of it. She thought she might have been conned. And what do I do with it? She said, still observing the rice baggie, holding it up to her face. When the time comes, you eat it. 